This tutorial is a quick explanation of how to adjust square footage differences when you're doing a CMA. If you go back to the CMA we covered in the basic overview of the CMA tool in MLS PIN, uh, you'll see a sample CMA here. Uh, we have the subject property and three comparable properties. Now keep in mind this CMA was done purely to show the function of the tool and how to do some equations. Uh, later on we'll cover how to choose comparable properties and when we're choosing them properly these properties would not actually be valid comparable properties because they are too different in size. Uh, the definition of doing a comparable market analysis is comparing similar properties to the subject property. Uh, in this case, 640 square feet versus 1,005 square foot are just entirely different types of properties. Uh, rule of thumb is to generally stay within 10 to 15 percent of uh, the subject square footage. Anyway, that said, the way you do the adjustments for square footage, it's a simple equation. Uh, the equation is taking the average of the price per square foot values of all the comparables and dividing by four. Again, it's the average price per square foot of all the comparables divided by four. Uh, generally, when consumers look at properties online, um, you know, on realtor sites and whatever, they, they'll do a simple price per square foot calculation. Uh, let's, let's go to one of these comparables. So, for example, in Howard Street, let's say the price per square foot is $600 per square foot. If another property was 10 square foot smaller, people will usually just subtract 600 times 10 or $6,000. The reason in the appraisal world that we do a divided by four factor is because the price per square foot is not valid if you're trying to adjust for size. Uh, it's because different parts of the apartment or condo have different prices per square foot. For example, an empty room may be about $150 a square foot. Whereas a kitchen, if it's done nicely, could be as high as $2,000 or $3,000 per square foot. Um, so the principle is basically trying to avoid double counting. If we do the entire value of price per square foot, $600 here, then you'd be double counting because later on in the other adjustments, uh, we don't have them here, but in the other adjustments, you're actually adjusting for how nice the kitchen is or how many bathrooms there are. Uh, bathrooms are another place where you see a lot of value. Um, so how do we get there? Uh, so these numbers are invalid, so let's just delete them here. Uh, but we go back to comparable number one has a 597 price per square foot. So let's just say, put it over here. I'm using this Google Sheet as a calculator. So that's comparable one. And this will be comparable two. And this will be comparable three. Comparable number two has a price per square foot of 777. Comparable number three is price per square foot of 621.85. The average is Six hundred sixty-five and forty-one cents. 
average divided by 4 is this divided by 4. So the price per square foot adjuster is going to be $166.35. And what you do here is you take the square footage difference and you multiply it by the adjuster. Uh, I'll do one of these here for now. Um, again, just using this as a calculator. So 1,005 minus 640. is 365. So 365 times $166 is $60,000 and some change. So here we're trying to make 15 Howard look like 35 Bigelow. So we have to take away $60,000 of square footage. And then you could do the save and recalculate to get your new value. And you do that for the other two as well. And then you do it for comparable number two, comparable number three, and recalculate and you'll have your square footage adjustment. We'll cover other adjustments in later tutorials.